Hey guys, Tyler here. Today, I'm gonna talk about last night's debates with the Democrats. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Before we talk about this topic, I have a few announcements that I first want to make. For example, if you want to support me financially, I have PayPal.com and Patreon.com. And of course, my social media accounts are Facebook.com, Twitter, and of course, Minds.com. Last night's debate with the Democrats were really crazy. And for this video, I'm going to cover the craziest bits that I thought that I saw for the debates. And of course, let's start with the obvious thing that was like crazy to me. The first thing, of course, was of course when they started speaking Spanish on the stage in front of millions and millions of people. We appreciate the opportunity to welcome Latinos across the country and to ask about Latinx issues during these challenging times. En este país también se habla español. Este debate se realiza en un momento muy difícil para los latinos en Texas y en todo Estados Unidos, pero es importante que ellos sepan que sepamos que este también es nuestro país. Before I give my response to the whole Spanish thing, I first want a preference that is perfectly fine for people to learn a different language. As a matter of fact, I encourage people to learn different languages and not just speak one language. That said, like the whole entire idea of the Democrats trying to speak broken Spanish towards people, towards Latinos, is a bit of pandering, it's a bit also like uh, patronizing if you were to ask me. And the main reason why it's pandering and also patronizing is because basically the majority of the population of the United States cannot understand what you're saying. Like 80% of Americans, they know English, while there's only 12% of the population that speak Spanish. And of course, in my experiences, and probably in other people's experiences too, the majority of Latinos also know how to speak some sort of English. Like basically like the generation that are born here know fluent English, and of course their parents probably have some sort of, you know, knowledge of English too. So I kind of find it patronizing for them to think that uh, the Latinos cannot understand English when in fact most of them do. Number two, the whole entire thing was televised on Spanish channels. Like there's no need to translate what you're trying to say into Spanish when they're going to be translations of what you're going to say anyway on Spanish channels. And so that's kind of stupid. And number three, it's very important for the majority of the United States population to understand what you're saying because if they don't have no idea what you're saying, like, <laughs> basically they'll get really confused. I'm kind of curious, like, why, like, uh, Elizabeth Warren did not speak Cherokee or something when she was on stage. And so basically the whole thing about speaking Spanish is just kind of like pandering. Of course, Spanish is my second language, but I still think that basically it's kind of stupid to pander towards people. And I'll call, it also kind of assumes that they cannot understand English. It's kind of stupid if you were to ask me. And of course, the next thing that was also on my head right now is, of course, the idea that Joe Biden is actually running for president. And of course, when he was on stage, Joe Biden basically says some stupid stuff as well that make no sense if you were to ask me. We have to make sure that every single child does, in fact, have three, four, and five-year-olds go to school. School, not daycare. School. We bring social workers into homes of parents to help them deal with how to raise their children. It's not that they don't want to help. They don't, want, they don't know quite what to do. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night, the, the, the phone. Make sure the kids hear words. A kid coming from a very poor school, or a very poor background, will hear four million words fewer spoken by the time they get there. When Joe Biden went on and on and on about record players, I think he forgot, like, what kind of century he's living in. Like, of course, it was very common in the 20th century to have record players to play, like, the music, However, we're living in the 21st century. Like, basically, people nowadays play music on their computer and on their phone. Like, when I was growing up, people grew up with, like, the CDs and the cassette tapes to play, like, the music. I know what the records are. As a matter of fact, there are some artists to this very day that still have records. However, like, um, I know for a fact, of course, like, he seemed like he's not in great health. Mostly because when he goes on and on and on about stuff about he's talking about, it does not make any sense. Like sometimes he's very forgetful, 
and sometimes you just say stuff that makes no sense. Like, for example, just the other day when I saw a clip of him just talking about what he's gonna talk about, he said, like, truth should matter over truth or something like that. We choose science over fiction. We choose truth over facts. Another thing that I noticed when Joe Biden was just talking to people was the fact that one of his eyeballs was, like, shot red. Like, he really looked like he's in bad health. And I don't think it's a really great idea for him to run if he's, like, in bad health. And matter of fact, I think he should probably just stop the campaign entirely and just try to fix his health first before he does other things. He's forgetting things. He's making nonsensical stuff. Like, he really needs some serious help before he continues on the campaign or something like that. And, of course, the whole entire topic about gun debates was just going on about gun control. Like, personally, I'm, like, you know, very neutral about this topic about gun control. However, like, there was, like, a, like a controversy with, like, uh, Bento O'Work, where basically he was talking about conflict like confiscating like the weapons from people like the AR-15s or something like that. If it's a weapon that was designed to kill people on a battlefield, if the high impact, high velocity round when it hits your body shreds everything inside of your body because it was designed to do that so that you would bleed to death on a battlefield. Again, I am really, really neutral about this whole entire gun control stuff. In fact, this topic is the one topic I will not cover on my channel because it's just so damn complicated to understand. And it's like, like I, I know for a fact that the tragedies are like really horrific with the shootings and stuff, but I honestly do not know the answer. Like, I, this whole entire topic is just over my head. As a matter of fact, when I make videos, I make sure that I have some sort of knowledge of the topic beforehand by researching something or, you know, just watching videos. However, this is the one topic I will never cover outside of this video. That said, in the clip that you guys saw, he said that he wants to get rid of weapons of war. However, to my knowledge, like, weapons of war could be like pistols, could be like uh, shotguns, could be rifles. And so he was kind of very vague when he said that he wants to get rid of weapons of war because most weapons that are like legally in this country can be used against people in war. It just does not make any sense to me, at least to my knowledge. Also on social media, he also said that he wants credit card companies to make sure to cancel out purchases of various weapons. And the main reason why he wants that to happen is because he thinks that the credit card companies are basically culpable for mass shootings. Personally, I find this idea of telling people what they could spend their money on to be quite authoritative. Because ultimately, by this logic, if credit card companies are guilty by association because of mass shootings, then credit card companies are also guilty for the fact that America has a high level of obesity. And I think that ultimately, no company is culpable of any sort of action. Like, basically, I think that if you were to have, like, a transaction, it's confidential between you and the bank, and that people should use their money however they want to see fits. The final thing that I want to bring up is how the Democrats were talking about Venezuela. Apparently, they were debating on whether or not we should keep, like, the asylum seekers from, like, uh, Venezuela, and we should open the doors to Venezuelans. And honestly, that was an actually good debate about something that was interesting. Like, personally, I believe that since Venezuelan people are underneath a dictatorship like Maduro, they should have a right to asylum seeking to this country. And it's honestly like a no-brainer to me because honestly, like, the whole entire situation is awful there. Like, people are starving, like, the currency do not worth anything in Venezuela nowadays. Like, basically, there's, like, uh, the stuff, like, for World of Warcraft, where basically, like, that game is actually worth more to, like, currency than the Venezuelan currency. And so I think it's a great idea to bring people from Venezuela to the United States to help them out, because the situation there is just awful. So, yeah, the whole entire debate was just so cringy. And to recap on my first point about Spanish, like basically it kind of assumes that Latino people cannot really assimilate into the culture that they're living in. Like if I go to like uh, Mexico or Spain, they expect me to speak Spanish. 
if I moved to like uh, France, they would expect me to speak French. If I moved to Japan, they expect me to speak Japanese. And so basically this whole entire pandering stuff kind of assumes that people who move from like those countries to the United States cannot learn English, which is not true. Like there have been so many people telling me that they learn English through like watching TV shows, learn English from playing video games, learn English from the movies that we have, and different kind of methods. And so basically, I feel as though that basically if anybody were to move to like a different country, they, they should assimilate to the language and that we should not really pander towards those kind of people and that they should actually take the time to learn the native language of most people in the country. But that's my thoughts about the whole entire debate. Tell me in the comment section down below. And I'll talk to you guys next time. <laughs>